The highly anticipated JavaScript framework Remix 3 is finally here and it's not what people expected. Back in May, the team announced that they're ditching React in favor of their own faster and easier to use reactivity system. With support for fine-grained reactivity, context, signals, and even routing. But the syntax for it is kind of weird. I mean, what's the deal with the this keyword inside a function? And do they actually make you use iframes? Let's find out. And before we do, don't forget to hit subscribe. At the time of recording, Remix 3 is still under heavy development with many key packages under construction. Basically, it's nowhere near ready for production, but that's not gonna stop me from showing it to you. Here is a basic Vite Remix 3 counter app that right now doesn't have any interactivity. Note, Remix 3 is bundler agnostic, so you can use it with anything you want. Right now, we've just installed these two packages under the name Jam because that's the tag with the latest experimental version. And if you've used React or any front-end framework, this should look very familiar. To add reactivity, let's first add these functions and then update these two button elements to use the on prop with this press down function, which fires when the user presses down using left click, spacebar, or the enter key. We'll talk more about the create interaction function later on. Next, we need to add this to the function and give it a type of remix dot handle to make TypeScript happy. The this parameter connects a component to the framework's runtime system, giving us access to functions like update, which we're going to use to manually re-render the component when this variable changes. And yes, you can use a regular JavaScript variable in Remix. We'll also add that to the decrement function. And then we need to make sure we're returning a function that returns JSX instead of just returning JSX. Let's put that back. And now our app should be interactive thanks to Remix's virtual DOM. If you wanted something a bit more complicated, we could create an interaction that gives you access to the target variable and dispatch function that you can use to create a custom event and dispatch the value, as well as using the events function, which is a smart wrapper around add and remove event listener to update the target with the handle tap function whenever it is pressed down. If you've ever used custom events, or the event target dispatch events method, this should be very familiar. From here, we can add our interaction to our button. And in this case, we're updating the BPM variable and re-rendering this component. Remix also has support for the context API and signals more of the abort signal type and not of the reactive signals that SolidJS has. But Remix is a full stack framework, which means it can do things on the server as well, like use the roots function to create complex routes in your application. You can run these routes inside any server. In this case, we're using Node, but this also works in Bundino and Cloudflare. And you can also create frames, which are a bit like suspense in React that have a fallback, but are based on routes or URLs like iframes. So if this component needs to update, it can just check if the HTML it has is stale and pull in new HTML to update the component a bit like how HTMX or Alpine Ajax works and less like React server components. Of course, I'm only just scratching the surface of everything that Remix 3 can do. And I highly recommend you check out the videos from Remix Jam 2025 to get a better understanding of it. If I'm being honest, I kind of prefer the direction that Ripple is going in instead of Remix 3. I mean, it did take a while to get my head around and I really wish there were easier primitives to work with. But hey, it is nice that everything is using web APIs under the hood, like custom events, abort signals, URLs, form data, and much more. It would be interesting to see how much of this framework grows in popularity since unlike React, it doesn't have a wealth of libraries to depend on. And even though they are building their own component library, is it enough to make it worthwhile to learn a new framework? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Again, don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy coding.